What's good, everybody? It's your brother, Mad Black, the most dangerous and the most toxic black man on the internet, and I am black up in your face again with some more pro-black commentary. So it's come to light in the media that the new Blade movie is basically in development hell right now. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, Disney slash Marvel Studios was going to do a remake of the Blade movie and actually have Blade be more integrated with the, the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe that they've created on screen. But ever since they announced that that film was going to be, you know, written and put into development, it's been mired with a lot of problems. I mean, a lot of problems. Like not being able to get a good script, not even be able to get a good story or foundation for this. Uh, if you want to ask my humble opinion, some of the problems I think with doing this type of film within the Marvel Universe is that they want to make it a PG or PG-13 film. And in my opinion, if you're going to do a Blade movie, a movie about a vampire slayer and who's fighting monsters that drink blood and everything else... It needs to be R-rated. That was one of the great things about the original Blade films is the fact that they were R-rated. So it was, they were able to go to that level of, of violence and gore that they needed to go to. You know, if you're going to do a horror hero, like a hero that's set within like a horror type universe, you need to go all the way. If there's no point in going halfway or, you know, half-assing it, it needs to be what it is, okay? And the fact that they were going to try to sanitize that somehow that that was a problem in and of itself the second thing is and this is the bigger thing that i think is is an issue with this whole you know blade movie is that i'm just going to be honest and, and tell you that i don't think marvel wants to do black heroes at all you know if they do black heroes they they want them to be you know second or they want them to be like a sidekick or they want them to be effeminized in some way, shape, or form. They don't want to have a strong black male hero in their universe. They have Black Panther, and they destroyed that character, basically. Okay, they, they didn't because if they were really enthused, especially after the the immense success of Black Panther, the first movie they would have moved immediately to do a sequel to that film, but they didn't. And truth be told, the 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 head of the Marvel Studios, Kevin Faggy, didn't he didn't want to do the Black Panther movie in the first place. I remember years before, like when the MCU was really just getting like, you know, geared up when they first they when they, they just had finished the first Avengers movie and so many black nerds were literally begging Marvel to do a Black Panther movie. Kevin Faggy said he doesn't know how they're going to do uh, a technologically advanced culture like Wakanda in live action. He was literally saying that. Now, he had no problem producing Asgard, you know, a, a, a technologically advanced Norse European society, but he, he had no idea how they're going to do an advanced African society. So, little little tidbits and little nonsense things that when white people say stuff like that, that basically just means they don't they don't want to deal with you Negroes. <laughs> That's basically what it means to me, all right? And, you know, with the success of Black Panther, like I was saying before, you would think they would have, have immediately moved to do a sequel, but they didn't. Chadwick Boseman passes away. They basically use his death as an advertising tool to get people to watch there are other movies and, you know, be geared up for those other movies. And then when they finally did do the sequel, quote unquote, Wakanda Forever, which was basically what I call Wakunda Forever, where they basically just, you know, erased the males in that society. And it was all about the the females, the strong black female culture fighting against uh, Mexicans, basically. <laughs> so, you know, all the males are dead or incapacitated, or just not as strong, and the strong black independent females are going to fight against 
the, the Mexican invasion. That's basically what that movie was, right? So, sorry about that. That was my alarm going off. But that that's basically what Wakunda Forever was about. And so, so after that, I was like, I have no faith in Marvel of them doing a Blade movie. Even when they announced it and they announced that the actor... Uh, what's that brother's name? Mashar, yeah, Mahershala Ali. They were announcing that he was going to be Blade, and I was like, ah, you know, I think he's a good actor, and I think if they ever did like a, a Blade animated series or a Blade animated movie, he would be better for that because I, I feel like he's a great voice actor. I don't really see him physically as Blade, but I think his voice is, is great for voice acting. He's done some amazing voice acting over the years in animated series and stuff like that. So I think he would be great like if they had him as like a you know, a, a animated version of Blade, but as far as live action I'm, I'm just not, sh I just don't see it. And really the only reason they were trying to give him that high profile role is because he played in that, that gay movie Moonlight. So once he, he got kind of, you know, made in Hollywood by doing that, even though this man's supposed to be a Muslim, <laughs> a black Muslim playing in a gay movie, I'll be goddamn, you, you know, you'll see anything in Hollywood, I tell you, but, you know, he was in that, so they started, like, raising his profile as an actor in these movies, and they were going to have him be a new black superhero, and they wanted him to be in this Blade movie, but even he has problems with it because they were basically going to relegate him to the background, right? They were going to have a bunch of young female characters be the main characters of the movie, and Blade was going to be kind of relegated to the background. They've even said that in a lot of the articles that have come out the last two weeks or so about this Blade movie. And, you know, you would think they would learn their lesson after Blade Trinity. Anyone remembers that? That was considered one of the worst comic book movies ever like the first blade movie was good then you had the the blade 2 sequel which was actually pretty decent and then they made blade trinity and they basically relegated blade to the background remember that and they put ryan reynolds and jessica beale out front and made them the main focus of the the, the story they wanted them to take over for blade and just kind of push wesley snipes to the background see that's the thing that they were going to do with this movie too but they were going to get some young Probably not black females, probably some white females, because I think one of the characters was, was supposed to be Blade's daughter. I can almost guarantee you the daughter was probably going to be mixed or a mulatto or something like that. They weren't going to have her be fully black. They were just going to get like some mulatto girl and tell, tell you that Blade had an affair or, or had sex with some white female or some Latin female. And that's this is basically going to be Blade's daughter. I'm sure they're going to do that. And, you know, they're just basically going to push Blade to the background and they're going to use him to advertise and, and make it seem like he's the main character, but push him to the background and maybe even have him be a joke. You know, they might even make fun of him or whatever, or make him seem like he's a toxic black male or, or something ridiculous. Right. Because that's that's what they do to black males in Hollywood nowadays or just most males, period. But most uh, mostly black males, they've been doing that to black males forever. Right. And I knew I knew for a fact that this new Blade movie was going to be nothing like the original that Wesley Snipes had control of. See, this is where a lot of the confusion comes in because a lot of people get confused because the character of Blade is actually part of Marvel Comics, yes. But the original Blade movies were not Marvel movies. There was no Marvel Studios back then. Okay, it was just they... Uh, Wesley Snipes licensed the character from Marvel Comics and did a movie about it, but he put a lot of his own ideas into that film. And he used his own production company, which was called Amon Ra Production Company, to put that film together. And if you watch that, very, especially that first Blade film, there's a lot of pro-black stuff going on in that first Blade film. Okay, Just from the storyline of basically all these white vampires wanting to capture Blade so that they can be like him. They want to take away his powers, the fact that he is a daywalker, the fact that he has their their vampire powers, but he has none of their weaknesses, okay? And the only way he could save himself at the end of that film 
was to get the energy from the black woman. You see, he needed he needed the, the blood from that black woman at the end to save him. And then even other symbolism, the fact that his mother uh, had joined the white vampires and he had to kill her. You know, the fact that she had joined with them and was going to be down with them and she became basically uh, got turned out by them. <laughs> right. And, you know, at first he felt bad, but he told told her, I have to release you. So basically he had to release his mother that had become a mammy for these, these white vampires. So there's a, there's a lot of symbolism in that film. That's one of the reasons I love this so much. Right. Even the fact that, you know, a lot of people say, like, a lot of these black superheroes need, like, a white guy to watch over them. They had that in Blade, but you know, as Whistler dies, Whistler gets killed at, at, at midway through the movie. And Blade has to go on on his own. And he makes his own decisions from then on. So, even with that, you know, he, he cuts the ties from his white daddy and goes off on his own. So, that that's the thing about certain films when you actually do have control of them. Once again, this this film... Yes, Blade is a, a, a Marvel Comics character, but he was, that was not a Marvel movie. This was before Marvel movies ever existed. Marvel movies didn't start until Iron Man came out. All right, All the other films before that were done by different studios, and they had licensed those characters from Marvel Comics. That's why it, it did, all did not take place within the same universe. Okay, So, you know, I, I have no faith in... Not only these major studios, but just white people in general to do a decent black superhero movie. I, I never have, never will. I Because I, I know anytime they will do any type of film with any black character, whether it's a superhero or just a regular man, if it's a historical figure, they're always going to put some fuckery in it. That's, that's basically their goal is to put whatever their fuckery and whatever's going on in their mind or what their perception of black people is in these films and that, and they'll make it all about that right like if you think about even that the other film that um uh Mahershala Ali did where he was playing the musician and was getting driven around by the white man it was called Green Book I think right and it, they they made the whole focus about the black man being a homosexual and only this white man was ever his friend they made they played the whole uh the black community is homophobic and this white man is his only friend Right. And, and this white man teaches them how to be down to earth and how to eat fried chicken and just all types of nonsense. So, I, you know, if they do that to a real person, a historical figure, and even his family came out later and said that that's all that stuff in that movie was nonsense. Right. So if they'll do that to a, a real human being, what do you think they're going to do to uh, an imaginary person like Blade, <laughs> someone who's not even real? I have no faith in these people to do right by black people or show any type of positive black image. The only way we're going to get that is if we do these concepts ourselves. Okay, so that's all I have to say about that. You folks can let me know how you feel about it in the comments section. I very much like to hear from you, especially to all my fellow comic book nerds out there or people who are just fans of pop culture, what you have to say about it in the comments. And this is Mad Black, and I will be back with my foot on the devil's back.